<laughs> Welcome to our launch party for these ladies here. Elizabeth Musser's book, The Promised Land, has launched today or last week. Today? Last week on last election week. day, but we kind of pretended it's not till today. Yeah. We'll go with today. And <laughs> Magnolia Mistletoe, a lovely little Christmas novella. It dropped today from Lindsay Brackett. Yay! So I want to give you guys just a little bit of housekeeping as we are doing this live. And we want to talk to you guys. So I keep looking over here because I am the magic technician today. Yay, Chrissy. Yay, for, for the beginning. That was really cool. I'm impressed. <laughs> And so I will be monitoring comments and pulling some of them in so that they can answer sort of like Jennifer, who would like to say hello. Oh, hello. Hi, Jennifer. You are so you wonderful. Like your name. Thank you for coming. You show up all pretty like Jennifer here. Um, you may have to click on the little StreamYard Facebook at the top of this video in the description of this video so that we can see your name. So you can comment and ask questions throughout the party and that would be amazing. So we also have a few other people we wanna say happy birthday, book birthday to. That's right, we wanna say happy book birthday to mine and Elizabeth's sweet friend, Melissa Ferguson. And we hope that some of you are following us from her novel collective, where we joined with Melissa Ferguson and 13 other authors to bring you super fun behind the scenes looks at author's life. Yay, her novel collective hey. is in there with Elizabeth and I, and we are thrilled to death that the three of us are sharing a launch. If you're a member of her novel collective, you can hop over there and watch a video the three of us put together where we talk about all our books. But Melissa's second novel, The Cul-de-Sac Wars, a super fun rom-com about two neighbors who get into a prank war and then romance comes along, is available today from Thomas Nelson. And we also want to say congratulations to Rachel McDaniel, who launched with my publisher, LPC Books, today as well, The Red Canary, which I believe is it's definitely historical fiction. I have not read looks it. Looks historical, yeah. It definitely but, looks historical. And I believe we, I think she's a spy. I want to say there's a spy. Maybe it's World War II. Rachel is very beloved among a lot of circles. And so I'm super excited that she is launching today as well. And I'm seeing lots of comments. I'm not supposed to be looking, but I am. We're not supposed to be looking at the comments, Lindsay. Kayla is from the North Georgia mountains like me. Maybe we're neighbors. Hey, Kayla. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it well, Kayla Hudson? I could Kayla tell you lots of things. Like, Hello from Brazil. Brazil. Hey, Debbie. Hey, yeah. Debbie. So, there... You know, y'all are internationally famous now. You can say you're world renowned. World renowned. <laughs> and so, other really big news we've got tonight, other housekeeping things, is of course giveaways, oh, prizes. So or how to enter to win. You can win. Um, Lindsay's giving away a paperback and an ebook tonight. And paperback and ebook, yes. Elizabeth's giving away all kinds of stuff. Basically, you just get a promised land party pack. If right. you comment or ask a question, you are entered in these giveaways. So ask your questions, yeah. comment. There will be lots of opportunities. They're going to ask you guys some questions. Mm -hmm. So you will get to have some fun with that. Um, so comment away. So that Christy can put your name up on the screen. So that I can put your name on the screen because that's what we all want. It is what there. we all want. I think we should yeah. go pull one randomly and throw it up there so everybody can be uh -huh. impressed. Yes. So, I mean, we've got Florida, Lilburn, Wisconsin, Ohio, all over the place. It's and amazing. Yeah. Loves giveaways. So oh. there you go. There you go. Well, we're glad you're here, Kim. I yeah. am just loving the power of being able to put people on and off the screen. It, I know. It, you're it gives me a little bit of a rush, you know. By the way, Christy, I feel like people are joining this event and they know who Elizabeth is for sure. And maybe they know who I am. Maybe they're a reader of um, my Edisto books. But I will tell you that I think we should tell them who you are. Yes. So I am Christiane Hunter. I am an author of historical romance, but along with this girl over here, I do a podcast. No, other way, Lindsay. 
Um, I do a podcast called A Rough Draft Life, and we are kind of running the show for this party, which is why we get our logo up in the corner. And so if you are a podcast listener. We would love to have you join us at A Rough Draft Life, where we're talking about how we're all making life up as we go along anyway. So why not change it as we go? So that is who I am. But I also write uh, Regency Romances for Bethany House. You yes, we share them. we share the same publisher, so they very fun. But tonight is not about me. It's about you too. So we are going to talk about your books. I am going to disappear so I can run all the background stuff while they chat about their books, but I will be coming back later with all your lovely questions. So go ahead and ask them and we will pop those in at appropriate times. Yes. Absolutely. Maybe I'll just pop them in when y'all are talking just because it's fun and I can. And you're trying to distract us, right? <laughs> you're off topic. That's what I'm going to do. And all of you who are watching on Facebook, you can share this link. If you want to, you just click the little yeah. share button and be like, hey, friends, I'm hanging out with Elizabeth and Lindsay tonight and you're missing all the fun. And they are way better than any newscast, <laughs> any episode of The Bachelor that might be on. Any <laughs> sporting event. <laughs> I mean, everything that they can record right now is reality TV. And wouldn't you rather have reality TV about books? Totally. That's Good. what we totally are right now. Mm -hmm. reality. But, but can I say one thing? There may be one other event that is better than this that is happening at this moment. I cannot tell you at the end of this party, if you're still there, you will find out about a very fun event that has nothing to do with our books. No, but, but it's, it's a it's, really cool announcement. So now you have to stick around or your curiosity will yes. be yeah. alive. Exactly. <laughs> so, I think I have taken care of all the housekeeping issues and things. So you ladies, oh, one more. Christy. questions Christy. coming in, you guys. Hey, uh, Christy. What? Christy, one more thing we forgot. Okay, are you ready? What? We forgot to tell them about Facebook jail. Oh, okay. Thank oh, you. Facebook jail is a, it's a real thing. So mm -hmm. if you comment too much, too quickly, Facebook will shut down your ability to comment. So pace yourself on the communication front. You have to comment like five or six times in a row. Yes. So, so just let other people comment in between your commenting. Yes. So can they you, see, like, I can't see this at all. Can, can they see each other's comments? Yes. Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah. They Facebook can. put me in jail last night when we were running our test run. Oh, my um, word. Yes. They said I was not allowed to comment anymore. Yes. <laughs> now, you're not like there permanently. It's like a delay thing and you get it back like an hour later. So, yes. you know, don't freak out if it happens to you, but it is a thing. So. <laughs> But the questions are already coming in. So this is going to be a great party. Yes, it is. And somebody said they're thrilled to be here because I'm looking at the comments and shouldn't be. I'm not allowed to. I'll click over to the chat. I did too. I took a little peek too and I see some friends there here. So y'all yes, are so sweet to come in. There are people who say they know you. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're wonderful. I and like I want to just, this can I favorite. say. Deborah just uh, says, hey. That's my name. Hey. <laughs> Deborah says, hey. Okay. And I want to say thank you to Lindsay and Christy for allowing me to be on a rough draft life and do this late Facebook party. I, it's very fun and I am honored to be your guest. So merci. We are honored. Have you. Oh, that does remind me, we have had a good question that we should probably answer. And that is, Elizabeth, where are you? Ah, okay. I am not in Lyon right now. I am in Flintstone, Georgia. Yabba dabba do, and he Pebbles and Bam Bam are right outside, but it's their <laughs> bedtime. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm in the Chattanooga area right now. We've been back in the states for about two months and um, doing our work, our pastoral care work on Zoom and doing book stuff. And so yes, I am in. Chattanooga, the Chattanooga area right now. And yes, because if it were, if I were in France, I would not be a pretty sight at like three, four in the morning. 
I am seeing a good question. And the last name matches Elizabeth, so I think it should go up. Yay! Oh, those are my grandchildren. Oh, hi guys. Oh, and can I just say that my novel is dedicated to three of the most wonderful females in the world. My daughter-in-law, Lacey, my older granddaughter, Naja Lynn, and my new granddaughter who was born during COVID, Lena Skye. So oh, super cool. Thank y'all for being here, kiddos. So it's cool. really your bedtime. You need to go to bed. <laughs> Okay. I'll tell you a story tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to pop out of the middle. And you ladies, chat books. Okay. Ready. All right. Very fun. Okay. Very fun. Okay. I got distracted by a notification that Facebook was telling me that I needed to be ready to start my live video. And Christy, I, I, I'm live. I and mean, we clearly are live because we're getting a comment. So Facebook doesn't know what it's talking about, y'all. I know you're shocked. Okay. <laughs> but. Wait, I mean... I, we, I love your um, tagline, making it up as you go along, because isn't that kind of what you're saying? A rough draft. Yes, yes. Make, mm -hmm. We're all just and making I, it up as we go along. And I thought that's kind of the themes of our books too. Just um, the idea of um, the way is made by walking. So my, my novel is a little bit, um, it's about pilgrimage. And so it's, it's not, a comedy but I think about just the lessons we learn and it seems like for you too um, in your your Christmas novella that both of us are talking about life. doing life how yeah. to do life and what that looks like right. so um, so anyway I I really like the fact that we don't have control but we and we are making it up. We we know someone who does have control, right? And it is not Facebook. I'm so thankful that Facebook is not the main one in control. Amen. <laughs> so yes, Facebook uh, and all other social media just keeps going over our heads. But it's it's working right now. So. It is working right now, and you're right. And it is not in control. But we are in control of our party tonight. Because now Christy has gone backstage. Elizabeth and I are, we got the power, y'all, except we don't have any power at all. Yeah. <laughs> We're just talking. All the cool stuff coming up on the screen, totally not us. Totally not us. Yeah. But Elizabeth, we want to dive right into talking about the, Christy has all the power. She does. We want to dive right into <laughs> talking about The Promised Land. This is my copy okay. that I am yeah. actually going to be sending to my friend Julia, who walked the Spanish Camino oh, okay. last, I think it was last fall, actually. So I'm really excited to be able to send this to her. And I'm really excited to hear you talk about your inspiration for it. Um, I saw some people asking if it's going to be a series. So I know you want to talk about a little bit of the, the backstory that sort of makes it part of a series. And I'm just really happy that we have the chance to talk about it and that Christy is going to do some really cool technical things <laughs> while we're talking you guys you're gonna get to see pictures and videos and it's going to be awesome okay so uh, thank you for that <laughs> so yes the just to answer that question this the promised land is the third book in what i'm calling the swan house series so the swan house came out in 2001 and it's almost 20 years old and it <laughs> takes okay, place on my nightstand i'm going to read it next oh <laughs> well and it's, it takes place in Atlanta. And the main character is a, a kind of scatterbrained girl named Mary Swan Middleton. And she's 16 in The Swan House. The next novel in the series is called The Dwelling Place. And it takes place in 2001. And Mary Swan's youngest daughter, Ellie, is the main character. And it's told from her first person point of view. And Ellie has a lot of um, issues, don't we all? And, uh, and, and, the, and the dwelling place takes place in 2001 in Atlanta and on the beautiful Hilton Head Island, which we, my family loves. And it also goes back into 1968 in, um, in France and America, because that was a crazy year. So that's, that's Mary Spawn Middleton's youngest daughter. And the 
Promised Land is Abby's story, and Abby is Mary Swan's oldest daughter, and we meet her in the prologue of the Swan House, but now um, she is in a heap of trouble. She's a perfectionist. I know none of y'all could relate to that. Um, I certainly can't. Um, I'm never a control freak, but Abby is a control freak, and she um, is... This is awesome. free tonight, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> And so that's the that's she's the third that's the third book in the Swan House series. You do not have to have read the other two, but what I love about and I think you do this too, um, Lindsay. In your you have an Adista Beach series, yeah. right? All of my books take take place at Edisto Beach. Edisto, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. I, I would have said Lion, not Leon. So yeah, all good. Say but um, but anyway. I just get to bring in some fun characters from um, my previous novels, and especially Mary Swan is in The Promised Land. She's she's older and wiser and giving some good advice to her daughter. And um, Abby's son, Bobby, is 18 now. He was in her stomach in the prologue of the of the Swan House, so he's he's grown up and he's he's having some problems too. And the other thing is, I have this is not part of the series, but it's called The Long Highway Home. And this little girl, Rasa, who is an Iranian refugee um, and is about seven in The Long Highway Home, she is a beautiful young teenager. And Bobby falls in love with her in Austria. So, you know, it's just kind of all there. But you don't have to read any of the other books to um, to get into this one. But my my inspiration, um, so the so the book is about pilgrimage, and it's about um, Abby is control freak, and she her son is taking a gap year, and her beloved dad is losing his memory and his sight. Her other son is going to um, to boarding school. She doesn't get that they're all like trying to get away from her, oh. and and all of a sudden. When she's moving into this brand new loft on Atlanta's trendy belt line, her husband of 20 years says, I'm out of here. So she's just so the, it starts with being out of control. And even though I didn't know that we would be in the middle of a pandemic when I wrote the book, um, I find the themes very timely. Just what do you do when everything is taken away? Mm -hmm. And and so Abby goes, follows her son to France to take a um, to go on a pilgrimage that he does not invite her on. Of course and, not. <laughs> no, yeah, he's he's delighted. But anyway, so that's the the background. And my inspiration was simply that um, I was um, well in my other job, my other life. My husband Paul and I have been. Um, missionaries with uh, a, an organization, a faith-based organization for 35 years. It used to be called International Teams. Now it's called One Collective. But we do pastoral care for missionaries all over, um, all over the world and specifically in Europe. And for years, we've been hearing about a, a place in Santiago, Spain, um, where the end of this Camino pilgrimage is. And it's a welcome center that our some of our colleagues have opened to just to welcome pilgrims after they've walked mm -hmm. for a, a week or a month or a year. Um, and yeah. they can talk about their spiritual journeys. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that was an, I've been hearing about that, praying about that for 10 years to watch this become a reality. And so I was like, Ooh, this is a, be a cool theme for a, a cool story for a novel. And then I went walking on the Camino two years ago so that I would, um, you know, be able to tell, the story, because that's one of the very fun things about being a novelist is you get to do research in fun places like on a pilgrimage in France or at a beach in um, South Carolina. It's, it's always a work trip when we go on family vacation. Yeah, it's, 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 kind of, it's a work trip. Yeah. Hard. So, so anyway, I went um, I walked my own Camino and um, I think that. Um, Christy has some pictures here. Okay, that's me starting out. That you, I have my backpack on, and I'm starting out in the town of Le Puy en Velay, France. And um, that's where, in like chapter 10, I think Abby finally gets there and starts her Camino. 
and that's in the open square and in, and here are the signs of what sh tells you how to um, go on the Camino and you can get lost. This is a very important sign actually. It says um, <clears throat> the bottom sign, the yellow with the little um, white and red lines, I'm speaking in French, sorry, mm -hmm. is the normal way you're supposed to go on the on this trail, but it's a tiny, tiny little goat trail and it goes straight downhill and it's all rocky. So on the top sign, it says if there is a lot of, if there's a strong rain, you're supposed to go a different way. Well, Abby didn't obey. And so you can imagine she gets into some trouble and I did too. But anyway, so that's that one. And then we have yeah, there I am after I first walked up this hill um, from Le Puy. I'm starting out, and I had already made a friend. This Polish young man who was the same age as my precious Christopher, 27, he had walked from Poland. Poland. I mean, he had walked from Poland to where we are in France. He did not speak any French, so when he found me and we spoke English, he walked with me the first day, and I was like, I'm not going to walk near as fast as you. I mean, he had his whole life on his back and I'm, you know, having a, the lightest backpack I can manage. But anyway, he took that picture of me and that was our first day on the Camino. There I am when it was really, really windy. And you'll read in the story. She, she, Abby has a really windy moment. I don't know, Lindsay, if you're this way, but there's so many things that happen in my life that inspire scenes in my book. And, mm, absolutely. and, serendipitous I mean all of a sudden it happens and I'm like oh wow that is just yeah truth is stranger than fiction I have to I have to tell this Absolutely. so then we will see the beginning of the that's a, um, on the right the photo is the cathedral where pilgrims start their Camino in this part of France so there's about 15 different trails throughout France and Spain and um, and there, okay, that was, you saw the cathedral and this is the steps going down. And so now you're going to see, I think, a little clip of me. Um, well, there's Paul and me. This summer we went and visited again the cathedral and walked in the same steps that I had walked in two years earlier when I was had my backpack on and did the real Camino. And we were good. We were very obedient going into the cathedral with our masks. Um, and here you go. I think there's a little video coming up me. Bonjour, here I am. I'm, I'm at the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Le Puy, and I've got my trail side, my passport, I've got my scallop shell, and I'm ready to start my Camino. So won't you follow me? You'll see, I don't have my backpack. I did about two years ago when I actually walked it, but you'll see other pilgrims behind me. So come on, the, the climb is steep, but it's easier going down. Bon Camino. <laughs> I love how you see. are going down the steps in your sandals and well, not with your backpack this time. Yes. Yeah. Well, and, um, it's super steep. I mean, to get up to that, to the cathedral, I thought the, the pilgrims are going to be exhausted and that we were before we even leave on the Camino. And what you do is you go up at 7 a.m. the day you're going to start your, your pilgrimage and they have mass. And it was the sweetest. Oh, it was so sweet. It was very all inclusive. And you see all these pilgrims from all over the world and they, they, they do a blessing. And so, one of the things that I'm going to be giving away is a postcard of the actual blessing they read. This is in French, but I also have it in English. Um, very meaningful. And then another thing that every pilgrim has is a scallop shell, and you put that on the back of your backpack. But it's also the the marker on the trail as you walk to show you you're going in the right way and you can see on the postcards there's the little scallop shell and i was so pleased that bethany house there they have wonderful designers they put a little scallop shell oh. there um so that's i'm not giving away my scallop shell though 
No. So I could, I think I would like to stop talking for a minute and ask Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> so interesting. I was going to tell you that, you know, um, well, you probably don't know this, but my mother is an avid hiker and she is actually, she's an Appalachian Trail ambassador and she oh. has hiked the entire Appalachian Trail. That was one of the very wow. first things she did after she retired. She's retired from the U.S. Forest Service, um, obviously, because she's this outdoor woman and she was a park ranger wow. all her career. And, and she actually helped um, bring all the like national parks and, and um, Corps of Engineers parks and everything into that, into the re website recreation.gov. My mom helped to build all that. And so oh. but she loves to hike and that is her happy place. And that is where she gets away from it all. And she takes us a lot. Like she's taking my kids on overnight trips, backpacking. When she turned 65, she hiked, she took my daughter with her and they hiked 65 miles for her 65th birthday. I think they did it in like three and a half days. It was not very long. They hiked, they did long, long days, but 60. Wow. That is a lot. lot. It was a lot. Um, but I, I get that, that sense of when you have lost control and then you go on a, a journey like that, the, you, there's just something about how you get up in the morning and all you have to do is walk. Like that's all you have to do. You have to walk from here to here and just yeah. get there. And yeah. what you learn along the way is just, it's incredibly profound. Someday I'll probably write about her and hiking the Appalachian trail, but. I have not, I've hiked portions of it with her. I have not hiked all of it with her. Oh, look at this question. What was the significance of the scallop shell? Why was it chosen? I need to ask our workers in Santiago, Spain. I, I'm not really sure what the, the, um, the, why it was originally chosen. Um, that's a great question. I don't think I answered it in the book. If I do, Tell me, because sometimes I write something and I forget that I, I knew the answer. But um, it is. Yeah, I don't know the, the way back significance um, of the shell, but I do know that it is. It's like universally understood to be the symbol of the the Camino. Um, and so I would say until you find out differently, make up the meaning. I would say, you know, it's it. <laughs> It's your it's an opening up and it's revealing what's inside that shell and you're you're moving, you're finding a new a new path. I love um, that. Great love question that. though. Yes. And I was just gonna show you because you said the what I, I'm giving away um these uh passports. they're called passports. And the real Camino you get a creancial oh, I, I, can you tell I'm just like totally <laughs> So y'all so know this particular streaming platform is Zoom flips you. So you're like the same. This one yeah. mirrors what you're doing. So like right now I'm leaning to my right, except <laughs> that it doesn't look that way. <laughs> <It's very laughs> well, that is anyway, you get your you get a stamp on every place you stay. So I only did a three day Camino, um, but. I'm giving away digitally. If you sign up for my newsletter, you'll get it immediately. But otherwise, it's a this is a printed Camino and it just has question, reflection questions and Bible verses that have to do with the theme of the book. And, and but what you had said is um, I'll put on my glasses to read. It says, join me on a daily walk using each square each day to reflect in silence. Turn off all devices and use your senses to pay attention to what's around you. Bon Camino. And which means happy Camino. And I just think that's so true, what you were saying. Um, so much has a chance to get through when everything is taken away. That's another theme of my, my book. Absolutely. It's true. It's true. You just don't even know what you need to think about until everything is taken away. Oh, do you know how long the entire Camino is? The Appalachian Trail is like 2,000 something, something, something miles. I know yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. The Camino is, well, the thing is, it comes from all different parts of France and Spain. So it's, it can be up to 2000, 3000 kilometers, but like this guy coming from Poland, I mean, that was, it used to be, you know, back in the middle ages, they just started from their home from mm -hmm. wherever they were and they walked. Right. So, but the typical Camino, yeah, it's like, if you do the whole thing, it takes about two months um, from the, from the main start points and it's like 2000 kilometers. And here is that shows. 
the path we're going to take. Okay. I am. So anyway, this is a little magnet that I'm going to be giving away too. All right, <laughs> Lindsay, I want to hear about Magnolia mistletoe. I would love to, we need some Christmas spirit. We do need some Christmas spirit. We do. We do. So Magnolia mistletoe is, um, a, yeah, yes. Every comment you, you enter to win a prize. <laughs> Yes. Magnolia Mistletoe is a sweet little Christmas novella. So it um, is much shorter than a traditional novel. See how little it is? So skinny. I love it. And it fits just right in your Christmas stocking, in case you're wondering, because it's a smaller book. See, I'll hold it up with Elizabeth. Look how cute it is. <laughs> I love it. I love how cute it is. Um, I'm also really proud because I designed this cover. So it's the only cover I've ever designed. Possibly the only cover I ever will design, but yay. It's but very Mistletoe, fun. Yes, it is a, um, it's a Christmas novella and it actually fits, if you're going chronologically, it fits between my two other novels, my women's fiction novels, uh, Still Waters and The Bridge Between, fits chronologically in between them, but stands alone as its own story. And so all of my stories, oh, there they are. All of my stories take place on Edisto Island, South Carolina, which is a barrier island off the coast of South Carolina. It's about 45 minutes um, south of Charleston. Okay. And my mother grew up near there. She grew up in a little town called Walterboro, which was only just like you cross off of Edisto Island and you're basically nearly in Walterboro. Um, and it's just this little, little small town um, in the low country of South Carolina. My granddaddy was a tobacco farmer and they grew up always going to Edisto Beach. The stories were that they would get in in the in August, they would get the tobacco in to dry in the barns and then they would take off and they would go to the beach because school didn't start until Labor Day. And so that's what they would do. And then when we were all born, I have a lot of siblings. I have six siblings to be exact, actually. People always ask about that. I have five sisters and a brother. And today is a special day for my brother because he's a Marine and it's the Marine Corps birthday. So simplify Aww. if you're a Marine. And she would, they would take us to Edisto. She and her sister would rent a house. Sometimes their brother would come along with his kids. They would rent a house. My grandparents would come and we would all stay together. And Edisto is this rustic family beach. And I just had so many wonderful memories of it growing up and so many wonderful memories of my maternal grandmother. And she passed away when I was only 10 years old and it was sudden and unexpected. And it happened at Christmas time. And wow. we did not fully understand the, the difficulty of that, I think, until we were adults, until I had children of my own and understood mm -hmm. just how young my grandmother was when we lost her. But I always wanted to write about her. I had so many stories in my head, so many stories I remembered of what their life was like, so many good memories of Edisto, and I just wanted to somehow put it all together. And so that became my debut novel. It became Stillwaters. And then in Stillwaters, I created some minor characters, as we do you know, kind of helper characters. So I had a girl named Hannah, who is the cousin to my main character in that novel. And Hannah, kind of like you were saying, has a little bit of a perfectionist problem, mostly because her mother has a perfectionist problem. Yes. Good, she can blame it on her mother. Isn't that great? She can great. blame things on her mother. <laughs> <laughs> so Hannah's mother is this very successful wedding planner in Charleston and Hannah works with her in the family business, but her mother doesn't really trust her to do things on her own because, you know, every now and then Hannah will make a mistake. Maybe she doesn't use her best judgment perhaps in relationships. And so she feels like she can never be successful in her mother's eyes. Well, she meets a man named Ben at Edisto Island, and he is an entrepreneur. So Benjamin Townsend basically buys up property and houses and flips them and runs businesses. And just like, he's one of those entrepreneurs who just one time somebody invested in him and he has taken it and just made it work. So Ben has a restaurant. It's called The Hideaway. And most people who know Edisto Island know that there are not a lot of restaurants at Edisto. And it's kind of like a joke. Like, are there any good restaurants on Edisto? We don't know. They really just want you to eat at home. <laughs> so I am <laughs> Yeah, it's true. I invented this sweet little restaurant called The Hideaway and people will regularly message me and they'll say, is this a real place? And I'm so sorry it's not. <laughs> there is a place on the island called Ella and Ollie's that is pretty um, comparable to The Hideaway. But I invented this sweet little restaurant and Ben owns this restaurant and it's on the water and it's lovely. And 
when something goes wrong with the wedding that Hannah is planning, she winds up having to call on him and say, Hey, can we plan this? Can we have this wedding at Edisto? Can we do it? Can you help me out? Can we do it? And from there, of course, a romance begins. And it was just such a fun, lighthearted story to be able to write. There, are, There's a couple of heavy themes about letting go of control. Um, Ben's got some problems with his family where he's trying to kind of handle everything in his own power. And of course, we know that when we do that, it doesn't always work out in our favor. And um, Hannah, of course, is desperately trying to prove to her mother that she can handle this. That, And she's also desperately trying to do everything in a way that seems perfect and seems like the the exact way it should be when really she kind of knows in her gut, oh, but if we did this, people would like it better. But it's unconventional. So I don't want to take the risk. Um, so they're working <laughs> together on, to bring about this this wedding and they're just having a, a wonderful, they're not having a wonderful time at first, but then eventually they're having a wonderful time trying to plan um, happily ever afters for everyone else's while not realizing that maybe they're going to get their own. So. It was just such a fun story to write, and I had such a good time. Um, Anne says, I'm telling you a lot. <laughs> <I'm not too laughs> <much. laughs> oh, yeah, oh. loves Edisto and has read all of Elizabeth's books. And you're our perfect, ideal person for this party. We love it. And you're Anne with an E. So there you go. But hey, Anne. Yes, well, I, I, I love the. I don't know. I, I haven't written a, a romance novella or a, with a, a and I love hearing how you bring it about because your other novels are not romance, right? I mean, there's a heavy. A, yeah, they have well, they have a romance. They have a romance subplot, but the primary story is a, a woman's journey, which I think both of us write about pretty consistently. That, yeah. Yeah, the the a woman a woman's journey into like kind of figuring out at each stage of your life what what you're supposed to be doing and what you're supposed to let go of. Yes. That's so much of what of what women you know I, I say women not to discount men, but to say that I think that women especially um, at different places at different stages in our life find ourselves having to to um, kind of reinvent who we are because we go from, you know, being a bride to being a mother to being, um, you know, possibly An empty nester or maybe nester. having grandkids or, yes. or single and yes. yeah. All, all, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I wonder if um, I would love to hear just in the comments, just what, um, what you've had, what you've had to let go of during this season. To yes. Just the readers. What have you? Because I mean, I know from my characters, Abby is she has to let go of control. I mean, that's so broad, but um, she really micromanaged her her husband and son's lives. Um, and what would you say, Hannah needs to let go of? I think Hannah um, needs to let go of unrealistic expectations. Uh huh. Yeah. So I just wonder if COVID and whatever else happened in 2020, because it's all happened, hasn't it? Um, it if, has, for sure. if I would just love to hear people say, and again, we can, <clears throat> this is just our little way of you getting some more comments in. So you'll be off entered in the giveaways, but I still <laughs> would, would love to hear. I mean, it has, has it been, I, I don't think anybody can say, oh, well, it's just been so easy. I haven't had to give anything up. Oh no, I don't think anybody's going to say that. Yeah. My, ch my child is um wondering how much longer we're going to be talking uh, until we get done, child. At least 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. Well, y'all, I got the eye roll, the 16 year old eye roll. You know about that. <laughs> hey, Carissa. And so. <laughs> yeah, knowing um, the plan. Yeah. Yes, let go of knowing the plan for sure. Uh, I, in addition to. Uh oh. Elizabeth went away and I don't know why. Well, now it's just me. Elizabeth oh, disappeared. <laughs> I don't know where she went. I don't know where she went. We don't know where she went. Technical issues. Technical we'll issues. Out. But in the meantime, um, in the meantime, hopefully Elizabeth is getting back on. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> until she does, um, we can chat about 
I think people are leaving great comments, but we can chat people about it. Well, this about, here. So that's actually, this is talk great. about what you would need on a Christmas vacation. Well, I was going to say, actually, I think we should talk about what you need on the Camino since she's not here to tell us if we're right or wrong. And then we can see how close we were. Okay. So what do we think we would need on the Camino? On the Camino. So I feel like, Chrissy, you remember that game that we used to play in the car before people could watch videos in the car where you would be like, I'm going on a trip and I'm going to take an apple. I'm going on a trip. I'm going to take a banana. You know, I'm going on a trip and I'm going to take an apple and a banana and a chocolate milk. I was terrible. I was terrible at that game. I'm trying to. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, here she is. We're getting really good answers. Oh, those. Yeah. <laughs> I, I. <laughs> Like I need to replace my computer, but do y'all have it wherever you're moving your mouse and it just like it just it just clicked off. off my 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 whole screen. I mean it just clicked it off and I'm like, oh my goodness, what do I do? You went away in a hurry. I know we were like, what happened? <laughs> we thought maybe you got an important phone call, but we also thought you would have told us that you were going out with your important phone call. <laughs> so what we just decided Elizabeth, we are going to pack the Camino bag without you since you weren't here. Oh, okay. And so far, Lindsay has decided she's taking an apple and a banana. Okay. Well, that is, that's good. Banana is an apple or good. Do you want me to tell you what I took? Yes, I do. Yeah. I'm getting really great stuff in the comments. Positivity. This is what somebody has said to pack. Yeah. Uh, blister getting, care stuff. Yes. Yeah. That is huge. Huge. Because mm -hmm. that's. My so mom first, said that too about the AT. It says what now? She says you have to have good walking shoes, good socks, and stuff to get yes. from blisters. Like your yes. feet are your uh, main equipment. So this is I've I've got it all written down. First, first walking though, if I can find the screen, da -da -da -da. there. There we are. You bra you take a stone. <laughs> no one said a stone. Everyone said really practical things like water bottles and you know. And, and Elizabeth's going to take a stone because you want well, more weight when you ask have to why up. you have to ask why <laughs> so stone it if you read up on the Camino you'll see that you're encouraged to bring a little simple stone from home so I've done the Camino several times but I mean I've done it at my house several times. And so here's the other stone. Good. She's done the Camino in her house. Is that what she said? Okay. Yes, I was doing virtual Camino. Directions. Deborah says why. Good. Hey, Debbie. This is my my college roommate. Um, so what you do is you you bring a stone from home. It can be, I mean, just anything, and you um put it in your backpack. And at some point on the Camino, you're going to leave it. And what it represents, it can represent a loss. It can represent a loved one you're grieving. It can sometimes represent a sin for which you're doing penance. It can, it whatever it is, you carry that with you. And at some point on the Camino, you, you lay it down. And that is, you are releasing your burden if, if you're a, if you're walking it, it, with faith as a, a Christian, you might say, I'm, I'm, I'm turning my burden over to the Lord, but it could be, um, you know, for t a different reason, I'm, I'm mourning my son um, who, which is, there's a movie called the way it's Martin Sheen. And it's about walking the Camino when he, his son died on the Camino. So he goes over to walk it. So whatever mm -hmm. the reason, but there's in my, in my novel, they, it, there, it, there's an important scene where each of the main characters lays, lays down their stone or it doesn't have to be a stone. It could be your boot that you finally, yeah, it, or it could be a, a picture or it could be, and there's at different places on the Camino. There are these, these st uh, crosses, all kinds of different types of crosses. And there's sometimes they're just piles of stones around the cross where people have laid down their stone or that you might find, uh, yeah, a, their walking stick that's something you need or you might find um yeah a letter to a loved one so anyway it's a stone but it can be something else too and on my in my um wow this is really bad in this um did this camino that you can do at home i say the first day pick up a stone pick up a stone so and here's little saint james sorry are y'all getting 
Am I making y'all seasick? But anyway, no. he has he has his little bag and he has his walking stick. <laughs> And, he's and he has his, his he has his he has his little scallop shell on his hat. So, uh -oh. so that but other no. things were there other were there other um people suggesting what they were gonna take? Oh lots of people, but I do want to remind everybody, just speaking of this little um over there <laughs> your Camino at home, uh if you sign up for Elizabeth's newsletter, you will get a digital copy free. So everybody can be a winner today by signing yes. up for this newsletter. So, yeah. and I love the digital out. copy because it's uh, mm -hmm. the the this copy is great, but it's not as quite as pretty because it's more expensive to print. But the digital copy is anyway. It I was like very fun to, to make remember this. to take your camera on the Camino. Yes, so yes. You take your pictures. Well, and and that thing about leaving your devices in my book, I talk about this too. That. Um, Nowadays, everybody does have their smartphone, so it's hard to be. I mean, you have to intentionally make yourself be disconnected, right? Because, yes. because we've got our smartphone. Here's Port a good one. Okay, ponytails because they're not <laughs> doing their hair. I love it. I love totally, it. totally. Yeah, I mean, because <laughs> like you can do. Uh, Common showers, common bathroom, you know, it can be pretty, pretty rustic. What there if we are already signed up? Do we still get it? Yeah, it should. You should have it there. Um, yes, yeah, so Elizabeth is going to make sure there's a link in the next <laughs> newsletter to make sure that if yeah. you're already a subscriber, you get it. <laughs> it is there. In fact, it was in my newsletter I sent out last week that have, there was a you could just click it. But I will ask my wonderful virtual assistant how <laughs> to do that and tell yeah. you. <laughs> and Kristen's going to put up how to sign up for Elizabeth's newsletter. Um, you go to her website and you click the part that says newsletter. I it says contact. There's a button that says contact. And then you, you can, it says sign up. It, you scroll down and it says sign up for a newsletter. And, and I do you have a, a way to sign up for yours, Lindsay? Um, well, I have Lindsay's website is having issues. My website is having issues because oh. my person who helps me with my website is my friend Hope, who I do not pay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I sort of forgot to ask her to do some things, and I was like, "Last well, minute, can you do this?" And she was like, uh, "I have a job." <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. So I am actually in the process of. Magnolia Mistletoe was free for my new newsletter subscribers. So some of you may have already been a subscriber. So you may have already gotten it. Um, and so I had to take that down for when the book launched. And I'm in the process of putting back up a wonderful new reader magnet. That's what we call them. Because these are the free things you get when you sign up for our newsletters. There are thank you. So I'm actually in the process of putting up a super fun little little short small collection of recipes from the book, which I think will be super, will be just really fun for the next um, couple of months. And so I'm in the process of getting those up and getting those loaded and hopefully they'll be there next week. And as long as you follow my author page on Facebook, or on Instagram, you will be getting all the information. But you do want to sign up for my newsletter because one of the great things about Magnolia Mistletoe is that I was able to maintain the rights to do some marketing things with it, like, you know, give it away for free on occasion. Can't tell you when that's going to happen. Don't really know. But, but it you might. want to buy it now anyway, so you can get it because it's cute. You want to buy it in paperback because it's so cute. Yes, you do. Absolutely. So, and then you can give it to a friend as a Christmas gift. So, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've got, you know, I, I do want to say this because I've recognized a lot of names. You readers, our readers, we love you. You are so encouraging to us. Thank you for writing to us. Thank you for being part of stuff on Facebook um, or wherever. Because honestly, we, um, you know, it can be kind of discouraging a little bit sometimes, um, sometimes with uh, just the whole publishing world. And so getting, I, I say when I get a reader news, when I get a reader letter or um, a comment or something, it's like getting a hug from the Lord. I, I really appreciate that. And I know Lindsay feels the same way and Christian too. We, we are very, very thankful for you, but 
I also want to know, Lindsay, what people are going to pack for Christmas or have we already, did y'all talk about that while I was like gone, no. while I disappeared? We, we did. did not because I decided it would be more fun for people to tell us what they were going to take on the Camino and we could check it with you. So if you're going on Christmas vacation, not National Lampoon style, y'all. Like you can go anywhere you want because COVID is gone. That's the prayer. Okay. You can go anywhere you want. What are you taking with you on Christmas vacation? I mean, I'm taking like super good books on Christmas vacation because I intend to do nothing. <laughs> but what what are, what are you taking with you on Christmas vacation? Like, do you pack all the gifts and do all the gifts on vacation or do you do them before? Do you take really good snacks or are you going like all inclusive? Somebody else cook for me. Like, What's happening here on your Christmas vacation? Okay, that's good. I yeah. take clothes. Chrissy's going to take clothes and we're all very happy about that. Yeah. Yes, I like Beth. She's always going to bring her camera. Always. You oh, yes. are not supposed to be looking at the comments. I am not. No. You are. But Sally has the best comment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lexi is going to end up in a rough draft life party jail. <laughs> rough draft life party jail. <laughs> I'm in trouble with Christy, y'all. She thinks she has the power, but that's not true. <laughs> but I have, I have this question. Oh, look at her. She's gone. <laughs> no, but Lindsay. <laughs> Who, who really gets to read a book on a Christmas vacation with family? I mean, does, does anybody, because I am going like to see my wonderful, wonderful daddy, and then I'm going to see my grandkids, and then I'm going to see somebody, my other son, and it's it's like, and then I'm cooking a turkey. So I don't know, but lots of people are saying books. Okay. I, this book, is a Christmas book. vacation for you, Elizabeth. Like you're spending the last <laughs> Suck. Suck. Elizabeth, okay. might have an, she, Elizabeth might have trouble with relaxing, y'all. Yeah, I, I'm not identify you know, with Abby. She did say she had that control freak thing going on. A little bit, a little bit. Totally, totally. So. In fact, my 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 younger son, um, he he said as I was writing the Promised Land, he said, "Well, he's the one that told me I needed to get somebody to help me organize my website because it was like, it looked like a mom's website," and he said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him to look at mine. <laughs> and then he said, but now it looks great because I got somebody. And he said, um, yeah, and mom, when you get somebody to help you, let them help you. Because I just want you to know you're a control freak. You're a really nice control freak, but you're a control freak. So. That's hilarious. And I just saw my wonderful virtual assistant is on here. Jory, <laughs> make uh, she, if you need an assistant or if you need somebody that just kind of like talks you out of falling off the edge at midnight, um, <laughs> oh, then she yeah, recommends yeah, Jory. She recommends She's Jory. I did hire a virtual assistant for this particular launch. Um, her, my girl's name is Jennifer and she is wonderful and amazing and an yeah. assistant writer. And so someday when she has a book out, I am just going to shout it from the rooftops for her as a thanks for all she's done for me. So you guys are telling us really great things you're going to take on Christmas vacation. Last question. All right. What I'm going to tell you guys that Lindsay is now telling me she's only going to stop looking if I put up Rhonda's comment, but Rhonda has commented a few times. So I guess that means I get to choose which comment from Rhonda to put up. So if you choose I this one, if you, if you, see, I was gonna say, if you choose the right comment, it's a sign of how well we know each other. So, nope, fail. I might have to so, start a new podcast host. <laughs> I read well in the rooms with family, especially when at <laughs> I hear you wrong. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Hello. I'm going to make a technical um, uh, uh, confession here. Uh oh, what'd you do? This is a new platform for Lindsay and I, we have done a few parties before, but this is a new platform. And what I have just discovered is that I cannot get back to all of the comments. So some of you that left really good questions in the first part of the show, I'm going to need you to leave those again. <laughs> but hey, it gets you another entry into the giveaway because it's two comments. Okay. And so, I, I was writing down names. So like, 
Deborah and Barbara and Deb and Jennifer and Kim all have really great questions and I was going to go back and find them so you could answer them and I can't. <laughs> no, dear. What are we going to do with you? Because it's like when you scroll up, it doesn't go all the it way up. It goes back right. to 737. Yeah. In the stream yard. Now, if we were if we were looking at the Facebook feed, we'd be able to see them all. So yes. you all can yes. see them all. So if you left a really great question, just scroll back up and you'll be able to find your question. You'll be able to find it and you can mm -hmm. copy and paste it. And then I will give it to these lovely ladies to answer. And we will answer it. But in the meantime, you can also tell us if you're going on a pilgrimage, whether it's a pilgrimage, like a spiritual journey, like the Camino, or just simply a pilgrimage to home, which is really what Magnolia Mistletoe is, is a pilgrimage to home. Um, mm -hmm who are you taking with you? I mean, I'm going to take my mom because if I'm hiking on a trail somewhere, I'm clearly going to need her. She is. Who, you're taking. who she, are you taking, Elizabeth? Well, I thought about this for a while. And um, I'm, I, you know, when I went on my Camino, I just took myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to be alone. I get it. Because <laughs> I can't choose because I'm the person that my, my dad always said, Elizabeth, um, which of your best 100 Christian friends are you having over tonight? And so yeah. it's just really hard to choose. And my husband, I would I choose him in a minute, um, but he doesn't really want to go. I mean, we do lots together. And, and the bad thing is, if you go on a pilgrimage and somebody that you love is not invited and tracks you on their phone, no, no. don't. Don't believe it because my husband was tracking me and his phone kept goofing up and telling him that I was going in the wrong direction. One time he thought I was dead because he hadn't been able to get me. I had just stopped in one place for like five hours <laughs> and he was texting me and I wasn't paid. So be careful if you have people tracking you and because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's so I don't know. I, I would take, I think it would be really fun actually to take a group of readers. I just think that would be a blast to go together and wouldn't that be fun and just. What I'm hearing is Elizabeth's going to plan a um, Camino trip for her readers. 2022? I think you can do that. Let's just say that when you and I both, when we hit, hit, hit a million copies sold, because that is, that will mean, we only make a dollar a copy on our books. Seriously. Once we get that, we will be able to finance a few people flying over. What do you think? I, I so think that's a great plan. Go so out there, out. girls. You can do it. And you can, sold. We're in. We, you can spend the night at my house before we go. It, it's it's not far. Yeah. No, I think that's a good oh, one. This is sweet. Kayla would take her granddaughter. Oh, oh this is adorable. I love it. Oh, I, mean, I, I love, love comments. So I don't know what people are saying, Christy. I really don't. I well, well, I will tell. I will put up like some of the best comments, which is like this one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> well, I have to tell you too. Like I am huffing and puffing on my three little days of Camino, and I was so proud. I was by myself, and you know, my husband's freaking out because he thinks I've hurt myself. And um, <laughs> and I stop at. I get there one night, and and I've walked. You know. 25 kilometers that's pretty good and the host where i'm staying the abergi the it's like a bed and breakfast a very rustic one he starts telling me how yeah a lot of people a lot of families bring their kids their three four and five year olds on mm -hmm. this part of the camino and like they had just walked with their three four and five year olds on this trail that i i mean i almost died on and it it it's kind of a so it it, it your self-confidence. I feel, you. I feel you, Elizabeth. My brother <laughs> keeps telling me this is an easy trail. Yeah. Chris has, has emotions about that. We talk about it in one of the podcast episodes. I have issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mom's always telling me about um, the the people she sees on the AT who are hiking with their children. My favorite are the, are the ones where like the mom's got the toddler in the backpack and the dad's carrying the backpack with all the gear. And I just feel like that's a little extremist. <laughs> that's not the trip I want to go on with my toddler. I liked what Debbie said. She'll take Jesus with her. And I think that it, it, it's such a fun, um, well, I don't know. You just, you're never alone on the Camino. That's the, that's one of the main things you learn. And spiritually, yes, because you find out, I mean, I think we all have more space to get in touch with, um, with God. 
And also you just make friends all of a sudden. And that's one of the things in my story, you people you start out hating after you've been walking with them for eight hours a day, you got to kind of figure out how to get along. And I, I loved that about the Camino too. And I love my Polish friend, but after about eight hours, I was like, okay, go on because I need to slow down. I cannot do this. Anymore. You're just walking ahead of me. That'll be fine. So what about, um, I think we, I saw some questions. Do we have some questions. Okay. Um, here's one. Oh, that's a great one. That is. Do you have time to read for fun? I don't have as much time as I once had, but I, I still read as much as uh, I, I read two or three books a month, probably. And I am reading more now. Um, and I just finished um, another book that just released and it's, it's wonderful. It, uh, it's called the things we didn't say. And it's a, it's another debut novel by um, wonderful Amy, I'm going to call her Amy Green because that's how I knew her. She just got married at Bethany House, and I can't pronounce her last name now. But that's what her name is, Amy Lynn Green. She, I was going to say she's writing under Amy Green because nobody else can pronounce it either. Right. So. But it's, a, it's an epistolary novel. Um, think of Guernsey. And it was, it was wonderful. So I, I am getting to read more. And one of the reasons is because our publisher gives us, sends us, books we can choose books by our other authors and they send it to us and we get them free so that is that's really wonderful and i read more now than i did when i had kids at home though lindsay so yeah i don't know how you read. I, read, I read it um before bed the swan house i've been to the swan house i've been there probably 200 times i <laughs> i go um i love book clubs come and i and they invite me and i come and we have lunch together in the swan coach house and discuss the book or whatever they want to discuss and it is it but also i've been there a lot for like i had a bridal luncheon there and lots of showers and weddings and all kinds of stuff so yes it's a beautiful italian renaissance um mansion that is now owned by the Atlanta History Center. Mm -hmm. You gotta go. You do. Should be on. All right, way. Lindsay, what do you most enjoy about writing? Um I enjoy like the writing process. I enjoy honestly um when I go back and realize that maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> 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 Which is kind of how I felt. Um, I had, you know, I wrote this book three years ago, two and a half years ago. I wrote it a while ago and it's been free. You know, it was free on my newsletter for a while. And um, I had to go back and do it. I had to reread it when we, the, when my publisher said they would like to put it out. So I had to do a reread on it and we did another proof on it, this, that, and the other. And I hadn't read it in so long. I had forgotten that it was good. And I was kind of like, which sounds like, you can't say your own book is good, but if I didn't think it was good, I wouldn't give it to you. And so I just really, I think I enjoyed that process the most, the realization that, Oh, like, okay, I, I can do this. Like, this is my gift. And the Lord says to steward your gifts. And so I'm going to, I'm going to try and steward it a little better because this is not, you know, this is good. I'm, ha I'm proud of it. I think I, I just enjoy that like realization that, um, what I'm doing makes me excited. It's been worth it. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, I love, uh, I love the writing process. I actually enjoy the editing too, because I do not believe I'm God's gift to literature. And I love mm -hmm. hearing, um, well, you may be, I think we have to hold our stuff lightly. And I mean, we can oh, fight for absolutely. things sometimes, but mm -hmm. isn't it, it's like, no, I, I believe that, um, it does take a village to, Put a book out there too and um so i i enjoy and i and i have been blessed by having the same editor for all my books except for one but she and she just retired so i'm yeah. i'm devastated but she she and i became close friends and we just giggle together um sometimes at like my first novel two crosses we we wrote i mean this was 25 years ago i wrote it she edited it and then 10 years later, we put it out again and re-edited it. And we had made so many mistakes. I mean, the book was rampant with, I said, I said that, um, 
that Paul Bunyan wrote wrote Pilgrim's Progress. Do you know who Paul Bunyan is? <laughs> Paul Bunyan. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, I, we did some pretty, I mean, and nobody caught it. It was, so anyway, it's, I, but I love, like I said, serendipitous things happen and you put it into your novel and that's very fun. It really feels like, like, as Christian, like it, I'm, we're all Christians here, so I can say this, but it really feels like it's the Holy Spirit working through me. Yep. And when I look back at something and realize, okay, like there's no way I did this of my own power. It's, it's very humbling. It's, and, it, and, and then it's, you don't, I mean, I, I always say I, I take, I don't blame the Lord for any of the mistakes, but I do really believe that a lot of it is inspired too. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's and do you do this, Lindsay? I put winks in my novel, and I it's like just to a couple of people that it they'll they'll re recognize themselves in the novel, and no one else will know it. But it's just people I love, and like I have a, a baby being born in this novel um, because of my precious Lena. And anyway, I so I do that all the time. Actually, my Edisto books are so loosely based on family. Um, stories and, and actual family members. So Hannah in my story and the book is actually it's dedicated um, says for my dedication for Heather who knows how to plan a party especially an Edisto one. That is for my cousin Heather. Um, oh. Heather and I are 18 hours apart. I put a picture up of us um, on my Instagram feed recently walking on the beach together. We were there together in October and talking about how this is family like we she's 18 hours older than me our mothers are sisters and they are best friends and we literally have known each other our whole lives and she is just she's fun and she is driven and incredibly successful as a, a, a wife and a mother and a business lady and i just kind of wanted to give a little nod to her and so hannah is very much heather in a lot of ways so yeah i well okay what it Oh, okay. Whoops, we changed questions. There was a question about. Um, well, you're no, no. It was just it's what you're friend saying. Friend. Are they? Sorry. Are the, your characters based on friends? And I think um, I always. Sometimes they are, and I always change the name, and I try to change the appearance too, so that the people won't. Um, and I. And if it's really based on somebody like in the Swan House, Miss Abigail is was a real everybody knew who she was, even though I tried to disguise her. And so but I asked permission. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. if if it's um if it's too close. But I I love to um in my first in the Swan House, two of my best friends are two of the uh, the the sidekicks. And one of them has in, in this one has a has a real problem with smoking, and um, but I, my my friend does not. So we we always kid about you know that that smoking problem was you know have you gotten over it yet? <laughs> oh, that's funny. So what about this? What is something you've never written about but would love to explore in a future story? Oh wow. Mm, well, I haven't written about the AT. About what? About the Appalachian Trail. Oh, AT. Yeah, that. Okay, that is. I've never heard it called that. So. Mm -hmm. um, um. But are you? Would you like to write about it? I probably will eventually. Yes, I think I would. I just am not. I don't have a. Don't have a, a story yet for it right right now. So it's just not right the right timing. But I think eventually I will. Probably write yeah. about that. I would okay. love to write about. Um, I, w I want to write more about my grandparents when they were young. So I want to write about my grandparents who lived near Edisto. I would like to write about them and what their life was like. And then I would also like to write about my paternal grandparents who lived a very different sort of lifestyle because they both grew up in Atlanta in the fifties. Well, they grew up in Atlanta in like the thirties and forties and then were married early in the early fifties. And, and, um, where they are the majority of their married life. And so I think that's, um, I always think it's interesting to, to think, to look, go back and look at history and the way things were versus how they are now. So. Well, and I've, I've, one of my novels was based on loosely based on my grandmom's um, journals that we found when yeah. uh, she lived to be 99 and, um, and she, we found her journals from when, when we were cleaning out her apartment from when 1928 to 1932. And she was known as the girl of a thousand dates. She had a thousand dates in one year. What? And, 
And it's so funny. I mean, this was back in the 30s. I mean, you, she'd have five guys come over and sit on her porch, and then she, another guy would take her to dinner, and another guy to a movie. And I mean, so um, that's, that's a full time cool. job. Pardon? <laughs> that's a full time job. Oh, it was so funny. And and her, her my grandma was my dearest friend. She, one of my dearest friends. And my first book is not, is um, dedicated to her. But when she became senile, her younger brother verified, yes, yes, she was a girl of a thousand dates. But, um, but something I'm going to write, I actually have written about, and I'm going to, y'all have been asking, so I, I, I kind of am looking at comments too, and y'all are asking the best comments and the sweetest comments. But, um, I, there's a fourth book in the Swan House series, and it's called The Wren's Nest, because there is a real place called The Wren's Nest in Atlanta. It's Atlanta's oldest museum, and it's Joel Chandler Harris, <clears throat> the mm. Uncle Remus guy. Um, and it has been turned down by all my publishers be in America, and it's been published in Europe. But it's about, um, it ties in the, um, I'm, I'm losing it. After the Civil War, I'm saying I'm not. It's not restoration. It is. What is the word? Oh God, the it's not the Reformation. Oh, you no, know, not the right after the Civil War, it was re. Uh, anyway, it's reconstruction. When, what? Reconstruction. What? Reconstruction. reconstruction. Yes, thank you. Yes, I'm with you. Like it's about. Um, it's about a, a slave who is freed and her life in Reconstruction and on. And it comes into mod and, and then in present day, it is Mary Swan's middle daughter, Nan, telling her story. And it involves um, human trafficking and which mm -hmm. I have done. I have done a little work with an anti-trafficking in, in France. And um, so it's not something I wanted to write. I mean, it, it's again one of those things like what you're saying, Lindsay. It's kind of like the spirit is pushing you to something. It's a deep and a difficult theme, but I want my books to always have redemption and hope. And so um, from what I saw on the streets, it it um, it kind of in <clears throat> inspired the story. And um, I hope it will get out there one day. I mean, I may self-publish it, but it's, um, I, you know, sometimes those, it's not the time yet for a story. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, yeah. It has to find its, it has to find its time. And, um, who knows for such a time as this, it's a, it's a crazy time. Okay. Well, we are well over time. So I'm just going to buzz through a couple of other questions real fast here. Everybody's saying reconstruction because of course they know. And I wrote about it. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to let you two answer this one and I'm going to hide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. 40,000 words had to be cut out. Five chapters, slash, 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 ah, all the time, all the time. And I never obey, but, Absolutely. you know, but then, but you know, it's e they, they always say it's much easier to, to cut out words than to add words. So, um, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Lindsay? Uh, no, no, I generally have to add words. <laughs> you do? Okay. <laughs> Well, obviously, I blah, 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 talk a lot. So I heard um, Terry Kay. Do you know Terry Kay, Elizabeth? Uh -huh. I would think so, Georgia author. I heard Terry Kay speak one time, and he talked about, you know, he and Pat Conroy were best friends. And he talked about how they turned in books at the same time, and Pat's publisher said uh, something similar, like basically 100,000 words, got to go. And Terry's publisher said, could you add, like, maybe 50,000 words? <laughs> Right. <laughs> okay, one more question because I think this is a really good one to end on. Um, has your faith progressed since, well, Lindsay, we'll just say since the beginning of your writing journey um, and therefore reflected in your writing? Mm. Do you want to go ahead, Lindsay, and I'll, I'll answer after you. Um, <clears throat> I would say yes. I would say, well, the and it's less about has it progressed like faith and in my writing or in the Lord's ability to use my writing. It's more about, you know, faith is as my youth pastor used to put it, he used to say faith is stepping where there's no place to put your foot. And really that is what publishing is. You know, we write, I have a book I've written right now that actually Christy's reading and she's going to give me some notes on. <laughs> and so, um, 
you write it and sometimes you don't know if anything is going to happen with it. Like Elizabeth was saying, she couldn't get an American publisher to pick up Wren's Nest. You write it and you don't know if it's ever going to go out into the world. You write it on faith. You write it on the belief that yeah. this is the story that I'm supposed to tell right now. And you just hope that someday it finds a home. Um, and obviously, you know, people choose to self-publish all the time and that's fine. It's just not the journey that I feel led to do right now. And so for me, um, definitely my faith has increased in that I have come to realize over and over and over again, I have to lay it down that I can't control the sales numbers. I can't control the newsletter subscribers. I can't control the followers. I can't control anything about this. Like writing is publishing traditional publishing with a publisher. You let go of we'll talk about letting go of control, Elizabeth, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you agree. You, you let go of control. You're letting someone else help you put this book out into the world. And then you're just sitting back and letting God do his thing with it because there's not, I mean, we can do things like this. We can do events. We can do posts. We can share sales. We can do all those things that are, that are marketing things. But at the end of the day, I, what we need is people to take the book and crack it open and read it and tell someone else about it. And I don't have any control over that. And I don't have any control over um, whether or not you like it. I hope you like it. <laughs> But, you know, another another thing someone said to me one time when I first started this journey was that people do not read the book you write. They read the book they read. Um, and when you come to us as readers and you pick up our stories, you are reading it through your lens and your worldview. And you're bringing all of your own personal um, perceptions to the table with it. And it makes the story a little bit different, which means that what you get out of it is going to be different than what your friend gets out of it and then what your mother gets out of it. And that's what makes book discussion so rich and so wonderful. And I think that's why we found such a niche for it here in this online space, because readers love to connect with other readers and we love to hear everybody's different. You know, we live in a world right now where it's so hard to share our differing opinions, yet with books we can. We can how we can share these things together. And it, it's just a wonderful thing to be a part of. Yeah. Um, but it does definitely make you get down on your knees and say, it's all you Jesus, because it's definitely not me. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree. I, I think um, I went through um, <clears throat> burnout and I got a chronic illness when after um, after my first book came out, because I was trying to be full time missionary, full time writer, full time mom, full time everything. And mm -hmm. I was full time a mess. And, you know, when you go through, so I think suffering totally changes, you know, how you perceive things. And, and I remember when the Swine House came out, somebody asked me, this is different than your first three. What happened? And I said, I got sick. And I think um, <clears throat> for me, just the I've seen in my in my ministry life that nobody is so um, helped by me being the perfect mom, missionary, writer, whatever. But when I'm vulnerable and I tell the truth, it God uses it. And so I think that that there's a freedom to telling the truth. And I would say that um, for me, I, I look at my life in seasons and in the promised land, I talk about that whole idea of, um, of what season you're in now and, and what is spiritual direction and and, and it's, it's a different season than I was in 20 years ago. And and I think also um, I, a friend of mine says, you know, sometimes you think you're just back to the same old problems as always. And you're dealing with with it the same way. But and, and yet it's like onion layers. Mm -hmm. God is peeling away and you're getting closer to the center. So I, and, and I think no matter what you write, I mean, I write kind of. Um, I call it entertainment with the soul and, and it has more, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's deeper themes, but I think no matter what you write, part of you gets in there and you can oh, see yeah. your, mm -hmm. and I think it, I think it's brilliant when writers of historical fiction or, or even a rom-com can bring in that humor. I, I don't know. I just, I love seeing how we develop. And I think, um, as we grow as writers, then we and our faith comes through. I will also say there's times when I've been in burnout and I couldn't write and mm -hmm. what I wrote was no good. And so I had to start over again. So it's um, it's totally uh, a process. And it is, like you said, leaving it, 
getting on your knees and leaving it. And there's a lot of times I've said, I quit, Lord, I quit. And then he makes it clear that that's not what I'm supposed to do. And I, I think that's just, and, and you can see, Christy and Lindsay are nodding. I mean, it is, a, it is an interesting profession, isn't it? But it really I see it as a vocation. When we can see it as a vocation, and, and again, we know that our words have meant something to somebody else, it's about as good as it gets. It really is. It really is. Absolutely. Yeah. So well, um, we are going can... to wrap up because we are very long winded because we're authors and we have all the words. But we do want to leave a few notes. One, if you need more Elizabeth, you can get it. Elizabeth, tell us about this event you have coming up. So I will be doing, um, you know, I think one thing that's been hard for this book launch is we can't do anything in person. <clears throat> and so I am just so grateful to Christy and Lindsay for making this happen. Y'all, y'all rock really. And I'm also super excited that I'll be, I won't be at a bookstore. Fox tail books is this adorable indie bookstore in Woodstock, Georgia. It is, it is amazing. But anyway, they, I, they're hosting an event and, Patty Callahan Henry, who wrote Mrs. Becoming Mrs. Lewis and many other wonderful um, Southern novels, is going to kind of do a, a question and answer. And I will be the featured person blabbing as I have tonight. But that will be. <laughs> you do not want to miss this. Patty Callahan Henry and Elizabeth talking books. Y'all, that is a super treat. I, I'm I'm super honored, and I'm also we're also going to get back together the three of us on a what, rough draft life on the podcast and talk Christmas yes. traditions. So what can what hear you hear um, from Elizabeth? Uh, I think it's um, in December. It's the first Monday in December, I believe. I think it's the like December seventh or something. First or second Monday. Oh. Um, but you know December what? 7th. Just go listen to all of the a rough draft life so that you don't miss it. Because Elizabeth will be our guest in a few weeks and you can hear more about her Christmas traditions when she's on. Yes, and she'll yeah. be talking about those little Santons. Don't forget. Sweet little St. James can't little get on the screen. <laughs> so to wrap it up with a couple of housekeeping things, Christy, we will be choosing winners when. When will we close the giveaway? For so coffee? the giveaway will be closing um, probably by about... 10 o'clock Eastern tonight. Okay. Um, and uh, if I'm slow, then you might have until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have, we had a couple people mentioning that they came in late. The video will be, um, once we close it, it'll show back up on the page. So you can feel free to um, watch it back. And as long as your comment is on there before I draw names, it's entered and it counts. Okay. Um, but I will yeah. probably be doing that either later tonight or very first thing I do tomorrow morning. So um, you definitely want to go ahead and watch it, do your um, entries. And Lindsay and Elizabeth will be going and looking through their comments. So they will see the lovely things you guys have said, because I could have just kept a constant feed going of all of the fabulous things that you guys were saying about them. And they are going to go back and read those and when they can, you know, cry and hide under their pillows because as authors, we love to be vulnerable and share things with you guys, but we get very nervous when you start pointing it out <laughs> in person. So <laughs> he gets nervous. What you talking about? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, it, it's thank you. Thank you. And thank you girls. Absolutely. So, so that is, did we miss anything? Don't forget uh, to sign up for the newsletter. I don't think so. And don't forget to buy the promised land and Magnolia Mistletoe. Those links have been shared in the comments. Um, just look for, you know, one of these ladies commenting or a Rough Draft Life commenting. Um, and you will see the links that have been shared all evening. Yeah. So scroll for and, those and, and you'll get all of them. And we want to say word of mouth is still the greatest. Any way you want to use word of mouth. But if you if you enjoy the books, just it's it, it is wonderful that when you talk about it. Because don't I, I often I read the books that people tell me I, I like to read the books that my readers suggest. So mm -hmm. if you liked it and you talk that's a, and you sh share it with friends, that's a big a big thank you too. And it is Christmas time, right? So mm -hmm. you need a this gift. Let's make fabulous gifts. 
And we'll sign week. up. We'll sign. I'll send you little signed book plates too. Whoops. Can't find it. How do I do that? There we go. <laughs> they, they <laughs> it together even. <laughs> I'm going to just help you guys out by putting it up on the screen. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, girl. So I did see one um, person ask real fast, how do you enter? Just comment. Just comment. I will be using a randomizer to pull comments, and those people will be our winners. So that's Ooh. very easy. Well, so good night, and thank you for joining us. Now go read a book. And tell someone about it. And tell somebody about it. Bye. Bye. Merci.